friends let's learn the q cycle in photosynthesis in less than 5 minutes i hope you enjoy this video and this is useful to you first let's learn why is q cycle important in plants due to photosynthesis plants can generate oxygen via electron transport chain now for electron transport chain to transfer electrons it needs a in a flow of electron and this flow of electron comes due to oxidation and reduction of various molecules one of which is plastoquinone that can get uh, reduced to plastoquinol and plastoquinol that can get oxidized to plastoquinone respectively in order to maintain a pq pool inside the thylakoid system that actually helps in the movement of protons across the membrane bilayer and thus ensures the flow of electron to finally generate oxygen an important component for q cycle to occur is cytochrome b6f which is the molecule that is embedded in the membrane the membrane embedded protein cytochrome b6f consists of three main components cytochrome b6 the iron riske component also known as fe riske protein and the cytochrome f component as it is embedded in the membrane there are two sides of the membrane one is the stromal side and the other one is the lumen side in the thylakoid membrane the stromal side has less of positive ions and that's why it is called the n side or negative side which resembles that there are more negative ions than positive ions whereas the p side that is facing the lumen actually consist of the positive ions where there are more number of positive ions such as the protons cytochrome b6 has two sides a qi side and a qo side the suffixes i and o stand respectively for input and output with respect to pq or plastoquinone so qi is the side where pq can go and interact and qo is the side from which the pq is released plastoquinone and plastoquinol are lipophilic molecules and stay in a pq pool also known as plastoquinone pool within the thylakoid membrane plastoquinone and plastoquinol are lipophilic molecules that stay within the thylakoid membrane in a pool that consists of plastoquinone and plastoquinol known as plastoquinone pool cytochrome b6 has two heme centers bn and bp with respect to the heme present towards the n side or the p side of the thylakoid membrane and cytochrome f has one heme center now plastoquinol molecule comes to the qo site where it releases an electron to form the semiquinone or sq this electron then flows through the heme center of cytochrome f and gets transferred to plastocyanin reducing plastocyanin copper and this causes a release of a proton from the pqh2 into the lumen of the thylakoid membrane this kind of flow of electron through the plastoquinol to plastocyanin c is called a high potential electron transfer chain due to the loss of a proton and an electron from the previous pqh2 pqh2 has transformed into pqh which stands for plastosemiquinone now plastosemiquinone releases an electron which results in also the delivery of another proton or h plus to the lumen side of the thylakoid and the resulting semiquinone gives up another electron to the bp heme of cytochrome b6 from which the electron is then transferred to the bn heme of cytochrome b6 this transfer of the electron through bp and bn is known as the low potential electron transfer chain since pqh2 has now been completely transformed to pq or plastoquinone now it exits the qo site 
So that's why the QO site is known as the output site for plastoquinone. At this point in the QI site, another plastoquinone or PQ molecule comes in. Now the electron that was present in the hembian center gets transferred to the plastoquinone at the QI site. And this electron is then transferred to plastoquinone and converts it to the semiquinone form. And this semiquinone can take up a proton molecule. The proton from the stromal site that had combined with the semiquinone moiety has now made it into a plastosemiquinone that is referred to as PQH. The formation of the plastosemiquinone at the QI site of cytochrome B6 ends the first half of the Q cycle. In the beginning of the second cycle, you have one plastosemiquinone or PQH at the QI site of the cytochrome P6. At this point, another plastoquinol or PQH2 molecule comes and binds to the QO site of the cytochrome P6. And this PQH2 releases an electron to form the semiquinone moiety and the electron is then transferred through the heme of cytochrome F like in the first half of the cycle to plastocyanin or PC. This process again releases another proton or H plus ion to the lumen side of the thylakoid. The resulting plastosemiquinone on the QO site then again releases another electron that is passed through the BP heme and then to the BN heme subsequently and this also causes the release of another uh, proton from the plastosemiquinone moiety. Since the plastosemiquinone has lost its proton, it thus forms the plastoquinone moiety that then comes out from the QO site of the cytochrome P6. The subsequent electron that was in the BN site is then transferred to the plastosemiquinone that is present at the QI site and the presence of that electron plus another proton from the stromal site transforms the plastosemiquinone to the plastoquinone form that is now present and can go back into the PQ pool. This ends the second half of the Q cycle. By now, I hope you got the idea of the first half cycle and the second half of the Q cycle. Here is the reaction equation that shows the substrates and the products from during the whole of the Q cycle. And here I also show which components are coupling from the first half of the cycles and which components are coupling from the second half of the cycles and which components were formed in the first half of the cycle and which components were formed at the second half of the cycle. Look through this equation carefully. This will help you to know how many protons were initially consumed in the first or the second half of the reaction or how many protons were produced after the first or the second half of the cycle or how many electrons were produced after the first and second half of the cycle or how many plastoquinones you started with and how many plastoquinones you ended up with. So I hope this video was useful for you and please go through this equation carefully in order to remind yourself that how many plastoquinones and plastoquinoles are being formed throughout this cycle. So I hope you enjoy this video. In the next point, I'm going to show you how this equation is written uh, after balancing both the reactant and the substrate side of the equation. Balancing the equation boils down to one plastoquinol moiety 
plus two protons from the stroma, resulting in one plastoquinone moiety with four protons in the lumen plus two electrons that have been transferred to plastocyanin. I hope you enjoyed this video and please share your comments below. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button below and share and subscribe to my channel for more contents related to a similar kind of biological phenomenon. And please share your comments below that what you think was useful, if this video was useful for you or not, and what other kind of videos you would like to see in future that could be useful for you. Thank you so much. Have a good day ahead. Bye.